We and we are live. Welcome to another episode of Starseed Mission Support. Saying hello to all of you who are tuning in live already, as well as anyone who is listening in on the recording. So today we're going to be talking about walk-ins, our experience on this planet. We're going to talk about how confusing this journey is right now with this war that is full on going on between the Christed original consciousness of the universal oneness and the energies which are against that, which we will call the anti-Christic energies. Um, we're going to talk about how this energy has been siphoning original creation in the way of soul trafficking, which is basically what everybody on earth has experienced existing inside of the 3D false matrix soul prison. Um, and before we dive into all of that, our most exciting announcement is that we are officially launching the Earth Star Academy tomorrow. We're having our official launch party tomorrow in the afternoon around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And so I'm definitely inviting all of you that are not inside of my, I don't even know what to call it, <laughs> incredible medicine container. All of you that are not yet inside of it, we are having our grand opening party tomorrow. We're going to have a giveaway. It is a secret giveaway, meaning nobody knows what we're going to be giving away or who we're giving it away to. But there is going to be a giveaway that is happening. Um, the participants of ESA that has been journeying with us, you know, it's really been the feedback that I've been getting the most is that it's unlike anything that people have really experienced. And the reason for that is because, you know, I am Zier Star. I am here on a mission to correct all fallen matrices and consciousness and quarks, elements and filaments in the universal body. I believe this is what we're doing here on Earth. Since I woke up, you know, back in 2012, 2013, this one single task has been radiating through my consciousness you know i would literally be walking around the mall and i would touch things touch the wall touch the plants just try to send energy to everything that i perceived as being in a vibration that is foreign to me because my consciousness exists in a state of being at home being in alignment being connected being in remembrance of my original connection to pure and holy, true creation, universal consciousness. And I believe that that is the source of all of us, the source of all star beings, star seas, but of all humans as well. And because that memory, that state of innocence, joy, happiness, contentment, peace, all of the vibrations of home, they are so deep inside of me. It was very easy for me to see what was in alignment with that and what wasn't. And soon enough, it was basically my mission to study everything that was not in alignment with that. And I realized that this was the fallen matrix, the phantom matrix, the pieces of the universal body that has fallen out of connection with its original source. And I realized that it was my mission to basically anchor a multidimensional technology to incur this healing primarily through human consciousness and human DNA because we are the creator beings in this world and we hold such a major impact in the world but also in the nature realms through the planetary grids and through other dimensionalities as well and so the earth star academy is really a home for this mission this mission has many names but it is known as the christos realignment mission this is the same mission that many great beings throughout Earth's history has been a part of, namely Yeshua and that entire soul group that was here to seed original source creation consciousness, seed the knowledge of original creation, and to shift the trajectory of this planetary timeline towards fulfilling its originally intended design, which is heaven on Earth. So... If you feel like you are on this mission and what I'm saying is resonating with you and you also feel that the distortions in this world are so great and yet you're carrying this immense peace and joy and wholeness and purity inside of you and you feel like it would be fun 
to do it with others and you feel like it would be good to receive some support, this is what the Earth Star Academy was created for. It is basically a home and a training ground for our multidimensional mission as well as a interdimensional soul healing technology basically. It is a soul healing technology because it is an entirely authentically translated process of engaging in light body healing and bioregenesis work. It is created entirely through organic creativity that came through my body and my awareness as I went through my experience inside of the false matrix. This is why so many of the teachings and the activations are in, and the information, it makes total sense. It's information that we are all holding inside of our own experience. And yet, you know, not a lot of people, maybe no one has fully articulated these things into this reality. And so this is really the task that I have taken on as an oracle is to speak our experience into consciousness so that we can integrate um, speak the distortions into awareness so that we can collapse them in union with the truth of our divine love that lives inside of us and it's really quite something <laughs> people go through immense healings and activations every single day and it's really a great deal for a monthly subscription and so I invite you guys to join this amazing thing that I have been building and will continue to be building for a very long time because the curriculum is massive. Um, it is a massive body of step-by-step -step processes to work on the earth self. And we're gonna talk about a lot of these topics today. So this is just an official invitation for all of you to join my uh, star being training facility of the original Christos mission of realigning, reconnecting, reclaiming all fallen filaments and consciousness of this universal body. Okay, and now that's out of the way, we're going to be talking about Watkins, Gaia, the anti Christos energies on Earth, and basically a whole array of things that are alive. This week was very intense in the integration uh, because the more that we heal our human self, the more our higher self can land into our body. And the more that that happens, the more our higher self is going to start to look around in this world in an inquisitive kind of way. You know, it's no longer trying to point things out as good or bad is no longer trying to fight anything and instead it's really just trying to perceive and understand this is when the ego mind the mind that is constantly trying to figure things out right it's just trying to piece together the data is thinking is thinking about how i can make money how i can get on my mission how i can say, think and save the world and it's thinking 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 and this is the state of the human mind that many people are stuck in. And when we first wake up, you know, we get inundated by so much information and it's all adding to this chaos that is the human mind that is thinking, oh my God, I'm getting attacked. Oh my God, how do I protect myself? How do I save my soul and all these things? And yet all of these questions that the thinking mind is asking, the answers are above its pay grade, <laughs> meaning... So long as it's thinking about all these things, it can never find the answers and it's dangerous because it's causing the mind to look for the answers, right? Because the thinking mind is trying to figure all of this out, it's also actively looking for answers outside of itself. It's looking for people and courses and videos and data and books, anything. And this is a very confusing and chaotic place for our human mind to exist because it's out of its pay grade. This is not our egoic, what our egoic human mind was created to do. Our human mind was literally never meant to be the sole navigator of our life, of our survival. God, I'm just exhausted even talking about that. I feel so bad for these innocent pieces of our being, these parts of our mind 
that was really built for specific tasks like math, right? Remembering. It was never meant for these parts of our brain to figure out how to survive and to figure out everything that is about this world. And yet we're so trained to be in this kind of state in our mind that when we first wake up, when we step into the spiritual path, we're still operating in that thinking mind kind of state of brainwave state. Um, And so it's a very chaotic and crazy place to be because all of the answers that our thinking mind is trying to figure out, they are existent on a vibrational consciousness that is outside of the brainwave frequency that the thinking mind exists in. And so what we're wanting to do then is to actually come into our receptive mind, our receptive mind where we can actually start to really pay attention where we're not trying to think or conjure up the information or to figure things out actively, but to actually come into such a deep state of stillness that we can perceive all the layers and levels of what already is. This is a tricky thing to do because A, we're just trained and groomed by the false matrix to be in our thinking mind all the time. B, Our nervous system, when it's filled up with trauma and stress and fear, you know, of poverty and lack and needing to survive, it aggravates this thinking mind because there's a a loop where our thinking mind believes that it's the sole navigator of our life, that it is the source of our survival, that its job is to figure out how to keep us safe. And then it's this feedback loop between our activated traumatized nervous system and this active thinking mind and this is the state of being that most people are existing in most of the time unless we've done extensive work in healing releasing trauma and working on aligning our consciousness and our nervous system to the vibrations of original creation which is when we can really kind of relax sit back, perceive all the pieces and all the layers of what is occurring. And this is very important because lately there's just so much going on. And I think the more that we are awakening, the more that we're seeing the different levels of what's going on, all of the well-meaning but poor spiritual teachings that are available on YouTube and on the internet, and the disclosure about all sorts of stuff you know the plague and the the pokey juice and you know human trafficking and the government and all of these things so many things so many layers and then when the mind really begins to perceive just how far in the belief system people are like people are really subscribed to these realities especially known misinfo agents like i believe most people are just human beings trying to figure things out but in rare scenarios there are people that are legitimately channeling very scary and malintended beings and these people are highly regarded in the new age community and is the cia program that is designed to trap people in this level of our awakening right and so there are people that are heavily invested in these narratives and there are people that are heavily invested in so many narratives now being in this realization that there is such immense relief in the connecting from within to true original creation consciousness as in god as in divine union as in divine love as in the true home of our soul knowing that this consciousness and this state of being exists and while perceiving the maya it's really quite intense because it makes my human being exasperated sometimes and i think that many of you probably feel this way as well it's like holy crap what a freaking mess we're in you know how the living heck 
are we going to get out of this? And this is precisely the spiritual war, the consciousness war, the war over quanta, over consciousness energy that we're in. As long as people are confused and their mind is trapped in the ever cycling loops of seeking and chasing, figuring out, they'll be literally in vibrational, like an anti-vibrational resonance with true creation that they'll never find it, even though it's right, literally right inside of them. And so this makes things very tricky. And I've, this is kind of what I've been thinking about all week, honestly. <laughs> um, I have been trying to figure out, I guess I'm answering my own question here. I'm not really trying to think about it. I, I think I'm trying to receive the answer, <laughs> sitting with the exploration, sitting with the receiving of this feeling that there are so many concurrent narratives so many things that people are just confused about i mean i feel like that's why there are so many quote-unquote misinfo agents it doesn't even matter like whatever they're saying isn't even their goal their goal is just to have as many opposing narratives as possible so that so long as people are seeking externally for answers that they'll just perpetually be confused <laughs> and i think that the false light has done an extraordinary job at this because as i'm looking around at the new age community i mean there are tens and tens of thousands of people that are just in a state of perpetual confusion even though they have no idea that this is what they're experiencing and i i'm really excited <laughs> um I'm excited because I've been working very hard, devoting myself. I mean, you have no idea. I've been working, you know, 60 hours a week on top of having a new baby of building this process so people can reconnect to their inner knowing. It's an entire guided process. And I mean, I know it sounds tricky because people are still externalizing, but, you know, the entire process is about learning how to feel our bodies, learning to listen to our bodies, learning to listen to our heart, um, and realizing that there are entire temples of knowledge that are stored or that we gain access to from within the star of our heart. Um, and I just want to scream it from the mountaintops, <laughs> you know? And this brings me back to my own personal work. It's like anytime I start getting a little bit anxious about the state of the world, the masters, my highest selves, they always swing it back to the center of my being because they remind me that, you know, the battle in consciousness, like, I'm pretty sure if we get into an argument with people on the internet, we're not really going to convince them that they're confused or whatever. <laughs> I think that the only way that we're going to navigate out of this is through completely and fully activating our DNA templates. Um, I started... This energy came back so just this month um i just hit the sixth month of breastfeeding and so my diet has really changed since before i was pregnant with kara this time i remember a couple years ago before i became pregnant i was basically eating a meal every couple of days and the meal would be like you know a quarter of what people normally eat for a meal would be like and i mean this would surprise a lot of people but I basically was tapping into this state of infinite energy because I was highly creative. I was out in a Stargate site where there was very little interference in the field. And so I was able to sustain this vibration where I was just in a state of joy and excitement and creation like all day, every day. And then I would be so happy that I wouldn't even feel hungry and I didn't really feel like I needed to eat until my body got hungry which would happen every couple of days sometimes 
two to three days even. And in that state of being, when I did want to eat, this at this time I was living um, in the high elevation desert forest of New Mexico. And so at 7,000 feet in the desert, I found that what my body craved the most was actually red meat, <laughs> steak. Um, and of course, these are animals that we source from neighboring farms. We knew their names. They received, you know, hair brushings. They were just well taken care of cows that lived on the land that I lived. It was very um, tribal in a way. That's just kind of, you know, what my body was craving because there are no fruits that grow in the high desert. Like, I guess except cactus fruit. And I don't even think every year. But anyway, um, in that um, ecology and in that current vibration, this is that was kind of my diet. It was breatharian carnivore <laughs> which is i think probably very surprising to a lot of people because there is a lot of dogma around diets like people are always like this is the one diet you know this is how you transcend and it's like depending on your lineage depending on where you are in the earth geology depending on you know what is available around you what the water content is all of these things change what is the correct diet for any person at any given time and you know at this point now that i am you know more on the um carolinian forests of ontario very wet marshy lands a lot of lakes you know i have been steering my, my diet has been a lot different and so obviously my diet also changed when i became pregnant and throughout my breastfeeding journey and just in the last week since i've hit the six months mark and kara started eating solids and i'm not producing as much milk i am experiencing a return of this consciousness where i'm starting to no longer need as much food again and i think that this is just the beginning right it's like when we begin to rehabilitate our dna um we begin to activate the acidic powers. And I think breatharianism is probably one of the first ones. It seems like a kind of a portal entry into a state of consciousness and a state of being. Now, there are lots of people that have achieved this consciousness, supposedly. Um, and there's a lot of teachers. And I have been reading one woman's books um, for many years. Her name is Yaz Muheen she supposedly came up with this 21 day process of taking people through into breatharianism and i can't really figure out why there has been no scientific studies that i can find you know there are documentaries that are made about these people but in my mind and somebody please explain to me maybe you know why um this is but I would think if somebody hasn't eaten in like a decade or something that there would be at least studies that were done, you know, just seeing how their metabolic rates are sustained, how their body is creating cells. I feel like all of this would be the correct science that we could be studying, um, but not really anything like that exists. In fact, anytime there has been people that try to track breatharians, they end up losing a whole bunch of weight, which means that they're not sustaining by prana. So this is very interesting. Um, I'm definitely in support of all people that are spreading this consciousness. I'm just thinking out loud. This is just how my brain works i think i have mars and gemini and i'm always always just testing out different ways of thinking because i feel like we need to be able to question everything that we come in contact with so we're never just jumping into a wagon and this is how we get harvested right we're jumping into a narrative that we don't per personally understand or have personally experienced and anytime that happens we run the risk of basically donating our consciousness quanta to an unknown force that we don't even know if we truly align with or not so um yasmuheen is spelled j-a-s-m-u-h-e-e-n right so
I feel like once you get to, and I, I'm just speaking from my personal experience because I have tapped into this consciousness. Like one time, um, well, first of all, in those times when you're just eating a couple times um, a week, I feel like it's really the movement and the creativity that's generating electrons. And this has actually been kind of proven by this man's work named Dr. Tennant, T-E-N-N-E-N-T. He studies, I mean, I think he was a surgeon or some sort of uh, proper medical doctor. And then he realized that the whole medical system is, well, not name it, <laughs> but then he started studying the voltage and the electricity of the human body and how we have these circuits that run, basically the meridian systems. They are Tesla coils that run cosmic energy through our body and all of our processes that occur inside of our body are um, electric and not like the dirty electric energy but just that they are electric in nature it's a flow of energy and so essentially there is latent energy um, inside of our body that gets generated through piezoelectricity basis which is basically when we move when we're in action when we move our muscles we actually generate electrons and so there's some something in there where our body can become a free energy device and it has to do with our ability to tap into creativity and then moving that into motion and so that has been the primary experience that i have had another part of it is um, a love for creation so this is the other side of it where um, I'm sure you can run and exercise and there are people that obviously are extremely proficient uh, sports people and they're still aging and their bodies are still dying and they're still eating a lot of food. So obviously there's something more than just moving that generates that free energy. And I think the other part of this is um, coming into union spiritually with God, with source, with divine love, because that merges our consciousness with a field of energy where we're moving in co-creation with that force. And the more that you merge with that consciousness, I have felt just my whole body um, be enmeshed in this golden, Christed, pranic light. And I felt like if I could exist in such deep union with that energy, then that energy would nourish me on such a deep level that I would no longer need to be sustained by food or anything like that. Um, of course, there are steps to this. And the first step is actually reclaiming our cellular processes and detoxing and we do talk about all of these things in the earth star academy we start going into the electrical circuits of our physical body as well as the sewage systems and the detox of all of our organ systems which prepares our biological body for ascension of biological templating this is all in the foundations level and we're about to get into this over the next couple months which is why these codes and energy are so alive in me for those of you that are listening that are in the school i've just been realizing you know that this is actually the best time for anyone to be a part of isa because isa is going to be around for a long time it is going to serve tens of thousands of star beings and i've already been shown this but this is really the only time in this lifetime where you're getting to basically go through the curriculum with me because I'm going through it as it's coming through, which means that all of these codes are so active and alive in my consciousness that if you ask the right questions, you're also getting access to me in the heartbeat, in the community where people can ask questions. And I think that as Isa grows in the future, you know, obviously people are not going to have as much access to this part of actively getting coaching from me which I think is probably the most valuable thing about being ISA right now. So I know that it's taking me a bit of time to process all the codes and to get the curriculum to continue to be built, which you know a lot of it is um, has been recorded this year, 
but a lot of it is being built as the planet is evolving as our planetary family is coming into readiness uh, because the level of bioregenesis that is going to happen you know i am committed <laughs> um from all friends you know i have kara who when i the first time that kara ever came to visit me before she was conceived the first time she told me she was coming to teach me how to materialize things from thin air and for my long-term followers you guys know that she then you know transitioned back into the other world to take my consciousness with her and this entire initiation was just the beginning of her soul's initiation initiating me into these mysteries of ascension these are pretty intense <laughs> initiations which you know i feel really are a um i think something that uh adds to the credit and the truth of what i'm saying because it's a real human experience that brings us to the edge of our vibrational capacity that then takes us into octaves of consciousness beyond um, our previous octave. And so that's basically what ascension is. And eventually our biology begins to ascend in consciousness as well. And this is really the foundation of the Earth Star Academy is, you know, my experiences going through these, this ascension just alongside everyone with all of you here on earth and so that being said i feel like this state of being is really a portal of entry into other cidic powers i feel like by the time that you are um i also uh, this is um, experiential as well because at that point this was i think um i would say around december of 2020 December of 2020, and you can think back to your life in December of 2020, this was a major ascension cycle because for the next three to four months, um, I went through you know many corridors of initiations, namely that was a period of time when you know I was eating very little, I was receiving training with Baba G almost every day, and the training was so much about the magic of our true essence <laughs> which is you know we have this idea of divine love and it's this very mental concept but when we really start to feel the vibration of true christ and divine love in our body it begins to transform our biology and transform our state transform our consciousness, transform our understanding and our personality. Everything about us begins to mature. And in that time, I experienced a great amplification of my healing abilities, right? Um, and I believe that as we step into these levels of cellular oscillation, which is when we're really raising our frequency right that word gets tossed around so much in our community but um rarely do we tap into the depth of what that truly means to enlighten and to alleviate the density in our physical and light bodies it's a process of alchemizing and transmuting the denser fields in our primarily in our lower chakra body, in the root sacral and solar plexus. Okay, and this is where the walk-in process comes in because I believe that every star seed is going to go through several walk-ins. There's a couple different kinds of walk-in experiences. The one that people commonly talk about is actually very rare and that is when the original soul that is born into the body leaves the body and a different soul comes into the body this is usually a very confusing experience very few legitimate true soul swapping walk-ins have resulted in 
you know, really amazing situations. And the reason for that is, is just very, our DNA is so coded for the soul. When we understand the incarnation process of the soul sparking and then walking it into its intended physical form, right? Our genetics is so much beyond just our physical looks and the physical processes. It also has to do with data that we are encoding into our system from the soul. And so when we understand the incarnation process, we'll understand that a soul swap walk-in, it's extremely difficult, right? And I have met only a few true legitimate soul swapping walk-ins and I've actually lived with one of them for a few months and I've just witnessed a lot of dysfunction in the lower body and the human self because it is very confusing and a very traumatic experience for the physical body and the human self without understanding of the human self which is usually what these walk-ins you know were missing which made no sense to me because i i was like if there's some you know incredibly advanced um soul from some other dimension they should understand human biology and human light bodies so that they're able to adjust for these um realities in the lower chakras right but unfortunately for some reason that data sometimes gets lost i guess or consciousness isn't able to land in the body and oftentimes this leads to a lot of turmoil a lot of difficulty a lot of poverty a lot of emotional um, hardship okay so a true soul swap walk-in is very very rare now on the earth plane for some reason people like to think that whatever is rare is better and so they want to associate an identity with that because it gets you know it's like more coveted or something but it's just not true because most star seeds will actually go through several walk-ins of their own higher selves and this is not any easier or any less cool than the first kind of walk-in we just talked about and in fact it's really a good thing like if you um the thing is that for most people your human self is really the one that was coded from birth right you're born into this artificial world most of us had a 3d identity you have to have a fragmented identity to fit into the 3d false matrix world so this is when we have 3D personalities and likings and, you know, addictions and personality traits, patterns that are more associated with a 3D. And these are the things that are encoded in our lower chakras. When we come into contact with our higher selves, it can seem like it's a whole other soul. <laughs> it can seem like it's this whole other foreign energy because its mannerisms are going to be different. Its personality is going to be different. What it feels and what it likes and what it enjoys and the hobbies and all of these things can totally change because our higher dimensional aspects will be essentially totally architecturally different from our human earth self. And this is essentially what most star seeds will go through several times and i would call these template upgrades our template is the summation of our light body in our human self in our human body so this is usually the, what makes up our personality <laughs> what makes up our energy when somebody says oh i like your energy that energy or our personality is usually made up of all of the subtle energies in our field before our awakening, the primary places this energy comes from is going to be our lower chakras because that is where our earth personality stored our information as we grew up. This is why a lot of the first kind of walk-ins, they have a really hard time. Actually, anybody going through a walk-in process has a hard time 
because our lower chakra is already full of data. It's like a hard drive that is already full of information. So we think about our incarnation process, right? Our incarnation process is basically the process of our soul coming into our physical body for this lifetime. This process is a highly sacred and revered process that is originally intended to be contained in a beautiful ceremonial container that is called conception, that is called the sexual act, that is called a mother's pregnancy, and the birthing, and then the subsequent processes of raising this child in society. All of these processes are highly revered in all conscious civilizations because we understand the daintiness and yet the meticulousness of a soul fully walking into the body, right? So instead of having any of that, we say, oh, going to the earth is so hard and we have this amnesia and we can't remember who we are. And it's like, oh, it's normal that we have no recollection of who we are on a soul level. I call BS on all of that because the reason why our souls are not making it through the veil into this physical reality is because of all of the distortions and the trauma that we're experiencing all along our incarnational path. Okay. And some children, they're known to tell you about their past lives, right? Like so many of us have heard stories of kids that are like two years old, three years old. They just learn to talk and they're like, mom, I remember my last lifetime. I was in this place and I remember these beings, right? And I see interdimensionally. And then of course, parents are like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Or because the parents are not holding that space of interdimensional connection, as the root chakra is developing the first seven years of our life, as we're forming our sense of self and forming our relationship and forming our understanding of the reality, these are the information that gets encoded into our lower chakras. So basically we're getting bad data, bad information, bad impulses, bad role models <laughs> our whole entire life that when we cross that threshold, the connections that we have to the other side and to our true soul essence begin to shut down. And then we begin to grow into our adulthood continuing to misform our chakra body out of alignment with our true soul essence. Whereas if we were born into a society that acknowledges that we are souls coming in for a physical body and we did hold that field open and we connected with the souls of the babies and we revered our mothers and took really good care of them and we created beautiful birthing experiences that are ceremonial instead of whatever the heck is going on in the hospital complex. I don't even want to talk about that right now. So if we actually had all of those things in place, right, as well as an education system that supported the incarnation process, would we still have a veil as quote unquote thick as we do today where people have no idea who they are on a soul level? I would think that I would think no, right? I would think that we would have a very different world. And so the walk-in process is about making contact with our true soul essence. We can do this through our higher chakras, you know, through the galactic chakras or through our heart. And once we do that though, you know, this is the elated psychedelic experience that a lot of people have right they're like okay i'm on ayahuasca i'm on mushrooms i feel amazing i have landed you know i'm this amazing star being and i'm here to save the world and then days later when the psychedelics wear off we go back to watching netflix to being depressed to our old patterns and processes and this is really not anybody's fault it's just literally science because our body and our denser fields this is really what is holding our physical reality together and so we will have this one moment of awakening where we all of a sudden jump ourselves into a higher consciousness or a higher vibration but unless we are able to alchemize and bring that higher vibration into our body transmuting the denser fields in our physical body we will forever feel like we're trapped between worlds, like we can't express our true self for, through our bodies, almost like we're trapped inside of our human personality with mannerisms that aren't even us. 
right? All of this is because we have outdated data in our lower chakras. This is actually a, a very deep process though. And this is kind of the basis of our Christic energy systems chakra class in the foundational level. Um, this is why I changed the name to foundations and not beginners because this is not beginner level work at all, but it creates foundation for us to actually begin to work on the higher level light activations. Why do people feel ascension symptoms or get really sick when they listen to oracle healings or do healing work? The reason is because they have all of this junk in the lower chakras and no way to access them, right? This is why I have spent hours and hours of my time dissecting all of the distortions in our lower chakras so that it becomes very easy for you to basically go through the library of things that I've written and internally address those things from inside of yourself. You're still going to have to do the work. The academy is just basically holding a scaffolding, holding a process so that you don't have to spend 10 years being lost in the new age sauce until you finally walk into your own chakras instead of reading and watching videos about chakras half the time is just not even <laughs> relevant information okay so this is why so many people are like i think i was jesus in a past life or i was mary magdalene or i was you know a great dragon in the 18th dimension and yet in the physical plane they're not really able to have any impact to embody the power this goes for myself and every single person that is on this call because the impact that we're meant to have on this world is tremendous okay eight billion people awakening to the truth of who they truly are this is what the true awakening is they want to hijack the great awakening to being like oh you know the government's lying to you and blah 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 well the true awakening is really humans remembering our true inheritance and reclaiming this divine vessel that we have to repair our templates so we can experience what has always been intended for us, which is divine joy, creative fulfillment, right? Excitement, happiness, friendship, co-creation, union, beauty. All of those things and more are what we're meant to be experiencing inside of our physical body all the time. I mean, when I was in that state where I didn't need much food, I was in a state of joy and excitement all the time. Even if something difficult happened, I had enough presence in my body to not be triggered by it, right? It's like the eternal truth of who we are never leaves us, no matter what is unfolding in the external reality. And so, I believe that this, I mean, once you're in this level of healing, and I've really just devoted the last 10 years to drilling inside of myself. I'm not even allowed to read books or take other people's courses unless they're for a technical skill, which is like, for example, I took one class about, you know, social media, because that's something that I need to learn about to do my mission so it's a very practical 3d thing as far as you know spirituality and things like that my path has really taken me inwardly i've been told since the beginning that i needed to reprogram and restructure my physical and light bodies and that this was my only task if i wanted to be on mission and support humanity i just need to get good at this one thing and so i basically spent the last 10 years doing this all day every day which is how i compiled all of this information and all of this experience to now support you in doing the same. But once I have spiraled into what I call template level abuse, right? People can talk about human trafficking and these things like it's just popcorn. They're just talking about it. And I can tell that when there's no emotional energy that is actually a part of those posts, that those people 
are frozen emotionally. Most people are. Because in order for us to unfreeze ourselves, we will have to go into the part of ourselves that has gone through life inside of the false matrix, which is on an energetic level the same as being trafficked. I know that sounds intense because you're saying, how could this be? But once you spiral into your own root chakra and experience the truth of having been deceived and siphoned energetically, which is essentially what rape is, to be taken of your essence against your will, um, all of this is really the real excavation because without doing this level of healing, we will never be able to land enough cosmic power inside of our body to change the external world. Whew, right? And so we're on this very intense war between the Christed energies and the Antichrist energies, which is essentially the energy of love and respect for life itself and the energy that has no reverence and no respect for life at all. And that energy is very easy to cite in our society, right? It's the same energy that has colonized, that has killed, that has performed genocides, that now is, for example, people are fighting pro-life or, you know, anti, I guess they don't call it anti-life, whatever, but people that are pro-abortion and anti-abortion. And if you ask me, you know, it's not even about abortion. I don't even think that the argument should be about this thing because the true conversation should be how much on a societal level are we truly in reverence for life itself? Okay, if we're going to say we're pro-life, which I am pro-life, meaning I am in complete reverence and devotion to all of life, when we are pro-life, it means that, you know, we are beyond these ones and zeros, yes and no's, black and white arguments of should we have abortion in society or not? Because the conversation is so much deeper and so much more nuanced than that, right? Even the fact that the whole argument exists and we're seeing, you know, millions of abortions happen in the United States alone every year. And also we're seeing children growing up in impoverished communities and mothers being impoverished and not supported. All of these things are a, a sign that we are existing in an anti-creation, anti-life society that has no true reverence, that doesn't hold value in creation, that life is truly valuable. Even a lot of pro-life arguments still are not embodying the true vibration that life is valuable because if we truly believe that life is beautiful and majestic and divine and sacred, then the entire architecture of our society would be entirely different. And so we are building, or this new world that we're building will be built on a foundation of the Christos, of love that we feel for life itself. I believe that, you know, that why North America is going to be a huge um, place of, I think is going to kind of be a new Jerusalem kind of energy a new leader in this planetary energy. The reason why I feel that way is because really the land here is still carrying so much of that embodied human Christos energy from the Native Americans that were here that held so much ceremony in the land that knew of our divine place as human beings in the grand play of all of creation, how we are so beloved and yet there's a humility in knowing that we are all so small. In my last video, I said, you know, we shouldn't keep saying that we're God all the time, even though we are a part of God. And somebody commented and said that, you know, we are God. And it's like, yes, I understand that. But my point is that if our human self is consistently aggrandizing ourself, then we're going to miss out on the beauty of what we are brought when we're in that humility of being in awe of how massive and magnificent creation truly is. Right? This vantage point of seeing 
the immenseness of creation we only get as a human being. We created this human experience so that we can have that awe, that humility of being human. This is one of the beauty, beautiful things that we get as a human. And so, we want to create this world of this Christic energy, this divine, beautiful, loving, safe, holy world. And the first place of contact that we have with our physical reality is our physical human body. And this is when we'll realize that the satanic reality has already infiltrated us because so many of us have subconscious rejections of our body. We feel ashamed of it. We judge it for being ugly or fat or not good looking. We judge our body for being gross. We say, ew, there's these you know, bodily fluids and we have bodily functions and we feel grossed out by body parts body fat, right? All of these things are actually a subtle viral program that generates this weird miasmic satanic fluid. When you are doing your interdimensional healing work, you will find that this anti-self energy, it creates residue. It creates louche. It creates waste product that weighs us down that blocks us from being able to be inside of our body these energies are deeply hidden in the root and sacral and solar plexus the lower three densities of our light body of course nobody wants to talk about these chakras right it's all about how do i connect to my guides how do my astral travel well you will not need to have external guides if your biology was not being eaten up by parasites, both physical and etheric. I would say that any vibration of feeling, so if you just tune to your body like, ew, my body's kind of gross, I'm kind of ashamed of my body. If you were just, I mean, I guess an easy way to feel this is you just imagine you were naked just standing outside in public. Do you feel free, right? Do you feel afraid? Do you feel nauseous? Do you feel ashamed? All of those vibrational energies are parasites inside of your energy body, inside of your consciousness. And this is so deep. This is just the surface level. I mean, I can't be telling you guys more about the demonic realms that are open in the lower chakras, siphoning our life force. I can't tell you more because it would be irresponsible, <laughs> right? This is why the Earth Star Academy has been built in a way where you go through the foundations level and then you get access to the intermediate level because I have to make sure that every single person has all the codes before moving on because we have this pattern of sensationalizing suffering. So many of our human parts are addicted to suffering. We feel like if we're not being psychically attacked, then we're not actually on our mission or we're not shining our light. We're not doing good enough or something, <laughs> right? So if we're experiencing turmoil in our life, if we're being constantly psychically attacked, if we have a human part that actually aggrandizes being psychically attacked, right? Uh, glorifies it like oh i'm being psychically attacked it's because i'm a warrior and i am so powerful and it's because i am interesting <laughs> right this comes from an inherent lack because just by being you just for existing you are already interesting you are already the most interesting thing in the whole universe because you are a unique fractal of source and no one else is like you you are inherently worthy of all the love and attention and respect just by existing, you are worthy of all of that. You don't need to suffer to feel like you're worthy of being important. All right? And so, so much of that programming is just like Velcro for entities and implants. And this goes so, 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 so deep. This is just the surface of 
that we're skimming here. All of this is processes and healings that we go through in the foundations level, which, you know, we go through the chakra bodies and we go through activations for each chakra. We're clearing out the primary implants, distortions, holes and slits in our aura body so that our higher self can actually come into our body and our body can actually hold that energy. Our body can actually be a container without holes for our true soul essence to be in our body where we feel this power and we're able to immediately enact that power by creating, by communicating grounded in a grounded fashion, by communicating like a loving, respectful, happy human being. When I see people talking in this new age jargon where we're just putting in as many new age spiritual words as possible and then the communication itself actually makes no sense, that's how I know when people have attached to a spiritual identity without being able to pull it through the lower chakras. Because our lower chakras makes us human. Our humanness is indispensable. Okay? And that's why I have just this allergic reaction towards, you know, spiritual mental information that ultimately does not take people inside of their bodies. If people are sharing information about galactic wars, secret space programs, ascension, but does not take you inside of your own body to do this level of healing, I would just turn a blind eye to it, honestly, because it's not helpful. It doesn't help you to fill your brain up with information. That's why the galactic history part of ISA is only one class. And I say in the beginning of class that that is the least important class of the whole curriculum. Because what you want is to liberate yourself. What you want is for your soul energy, your pure, original, true soul essence to be clicked into and embodied and expressing through your physical body. That is the goal. That is the only thing you need. Because when you are your soul in your human body, then you are going to be tapped in to everything that you need, to all the information that you could want. When you're tapped in, here's what I think. All humans are seeking their way back home. That's ultimately what every human body is longing for. And on the spiritual journey, throughout the new age, it thinks that all this information is going to help it find its way home, when ultimately it's just another side road that takes you further away from being at home, right? And so personally, I don't watch any YouTube videos. I have not really ever watched any YouTube videos. Um, People that have supported my path in the past, even though I still haven't taken their classes, I will, you know... Um, do some of their guided meditations. Um, Sandra Walters, Lisa Renee. There is a YouTuber who makes sound vibrations and I listen to some of his stuff. It's called Dr. Virtual. Right? Not a lot. Um, I have read Buddhist texts, even though I have thick discernment goggles on, (laughs) right? Because you got to have thick discernment goggles. For example, the other day, I read a, I don't even want to name any names. I read a book, right? And in this book is supposedly talking about galactic history. So many things. This thick book, right? Somebody shipped it to me. There's like so many alien races. I've never heard of any of them. And there's so many stories, right? Specifically, one story that I flipped to, which is I thought was hysterical, was saying that, you know, Mother Mary was abducted by aliens and Jesus was a hybrid. And I was like, wow, like, let me guess what agenda is behind this, right? Gray alien hybridization, because it's just trying, it was saying that it was Enki that did this or whatever. And I was just like, okay. I went to the review section of this book and there's hundreds of reviews and people loved it, loved this book, full of crap, full of crap. Nowhere in this book does it talk about your incarnation process and your soul's relationship to your body and how to get yourself in your body and just be yourself essentially. 
and thus come home. I'm just appalled because, again, all of this is meant to latch on to people while they're still in their thinking mind, while they're still running that brainwave frequency of seeking information and consuming information that ultimately does nothing to change your life, does nothing to increase your ability to help people, doesn't increase your ability to be compassionate, doesn't increase the amount of divine love that is embodied inside of your body. Now we just got a bunch of inf interesting information that may or may not be true, <laughs> right? And uh, I got a little bit personally offended for a second because obviously I'm very deeply connected to Yeshua, but not just Yeshua, all of the grail DNA lineages on the planet, all of the dragon lineages. I come from a Christed Chinese lineage, um, this original dragon lineage that was initiated by the divine Christed mother um, consciousness. And, you know, I received these informations. Many people think that my energy is very connected to Kuan Yin. So Kuan Yin also had incarnated into this bloodline, but she's not a direct ancestor of mine. I've seen these things in uh, deep quantum hypnosis journeys. And so there are many grail lineages. In fact, every human being is connected to a grail lineage because this is the source of our human beingness. We were seated here. And of course, these stories, right? We were seated and there's like all of these agendas of every ET out there that wants to claim humanity for themselves. Okay? No need to name any names because all I'm interested in is radiating this truth, this true energy of Christic embodiment, the destiny of human. We're not going to create heaven on earth without this because human heaven on earth heaven on earth, heaven in earth, earth star, <laughs> heaven in earth, heaven inside of our earth bodies. Without heaven, without our soul in our bodies fully, without the vibrations of absolute divine true love inside of our bodies, we're not creating anything. <laughs> because creation happens through this physical body, like every you know, at this point, we've recorded hundreds of hours of content inside of Earth Star Academy. Um, every single part of that was created by my Earth body. None of it was created by my thoughts alone or my spirit that's just floating around. It was all created by my Earth body. I have so much respect for my Earth body because this body is designed for so much greatness. This is our true inheritance. The body really doesn't get enough credit and I will sing the body's praises because Source created these bodies. Again, this is going to just be like, oh, okay, Whew, I feel this energy, this resistance. And I, I feel like we're really radiating this into the greater spiritual community because I don't feel like there's a lot of people here in this room that are you know, engrossed in this because you wouldn't really be resonating with my work if you were still in that consciousness. But essentially, I noticed that when I talk about how much I love God and how deeply this energy of union with creation, it touches me, touches my heart. When I express myself in that way, I can feel that sometimes it makes people uncomfortable or it makes people want to laugh at me because, I mean, but when we think about it for a second, I mean, I feel like a lot of us are also afraid of expressing ourselves because of this energy right we're afraid that you know people might think is silly what is silly about embracing the true essence of who we are <laughs> and so the other thing is when we talk about you know oh ets and their involvement in humanity there is this very hooky energy 
I feel these little hooks, like all in the sacral chakra, right? It's like it hooks our consciousness and we're like, wow, this is so cool. But like, what is the source? And this is where we learn to track. Using our consciousness to track the source of things. What is the source of information? Why are people sharing the information that they're sharing? It's very abundantly clear that I'm sharing this information with you because I want you to be radiating God's love inside of your own body and feeling so great and having so much fun on your earth mission, (laughs) right? Because I'm drenched in this. This is what I love. This is how I live. And I'm sharing this information. So when people are sharing information, you can track why they're sharing that information. And sometimes it could be as simple as, I like attention (laughs) or, you know, I think this is really cool and wow, you know, people are going to think this is so cool or I don't even know. Like, I think that unless the reason is true ascension, steer clear of everything, not, not saying that people are intentionally misleading people even, but not every human being is meant to be an ascension guide. This is true, especially for whistleblowers, <laughs> okay? Um, give you a little bit of context. And I had a lot of conversations with Sandra Walters and other, you know, true Ascension guides. There aren't too many because when you see an Ascension guide, they should be living these teachings. They should be telling you these stories. They should be placing themselves on the same playing field as you as a human being walking this path of ascension i'm here literally reporting to you live (laughs) of my ascension process right and the other thing is that a true ascension guide has gone through many initiations and many lifetimes to have the compassion and the emotional maturity the devotion to creation to be handling the delicate process of souls i believe this is true for every healer that's why my healer school we focus a lot on the cultivation of our emotional and personal maturity because as a shaman as a healer you're doing something that is very sacred right you're interfacing with other people's souls and bodies these are the highest vehicles the highest instruments the highest technologies of biology and god in all of creation so so much care and so much true devotion should go into that not just oh i want to make 10k this month okay (laughs) so having the awareness to this is where the discernment comes in right um and i think that ultimately then this brings us back to our our (laughs) ourself what is tracking our own intentions because if our own intention is to be entertained it's to feel cool being a part of some new age clique then we will be attracted to people that will give us that if our true motivation is to heal ourselves truly then we will not be receiving that from these people then naturally we'll be out of resonance with them right and so here we realize that we create our experience but most people are creating it out of unconsciousness and that's why i think that it's so tricky in our new age situation because there's just a lot that is being created out of unconsciousness Basically, people waking up out of the false matrix and then just bringing all the false matrix distortions right into the new age. And all of a sudden, we got this spiritual department of Walmart. (laughs) That's what I like to call it. So. (sighs) Okay, let's see here. We talked about everything that we wanted to talk about today soul trafficking okay so this is quite an intense part um karen says the author of this thick book has her part to play in opening and educating humankind most believe earth is all there is it's knowledge yes the next step is how to manifest this new earth so 
that is really tricky because giving people a bunch of false information can actually deter people from their path as well. Okay, if you're saying that, okay, here are a bunch of ETs, if the Christic energy is not woven into the teachings, then human beings are just gonna, that's, you know, another glass ceiling. And it's harder to peel people off the glass ceiling than there being no false information, especially because we already have so much misinformation in the distorted Bible. Okay, um, so I do believe we all have our role to play. I believe that her energy on the earth is really great. I just think that there needs to be way more forethought gone into being public with information. Most of people that are public with information are not thinking about the best interest of people and humanity. I think that's what it comes down to, right? I think sometimes it, people do have well intentions, but ultimately, um, yeah, ultimately it's very tricky because as soon as you get into the sticky territories of ETs, there are so many negative um, groups that are waiting for people to open up for them to be channeled. Uh, and that's it. Melly says the danger is no healing and waiting for ET and med bits to save them. And so, okay, I want you guys to try to zoom our consciousness out into the collective energy, right? This is what it is all about. I don't, this is why I don't name names because I just see things in big energies. What I see is that people are waiting for ETs. People are being entertained. People's consciousness is being quantumly siphon <laughs> right and so that's really the thing it's like um and i think that that is very dangerous because so long as people's consciousness energy is being fought over and it's not internalized um People are not going to be free. People are not going to be liberated. People are not going to step into their true free existence of what they deserve on planet Earth. And so it's very important to look at the agenda behind people, even if they're not aware of it. We can all do this by just zooming out of our personal experience, zooming out of the 3D of what is happening and seeing the greater effects. And I'm not even talking about one specific person. I'm really talking about, um, Karen says saying this book is dangerous is going. I'm not, I'm not, not sure what that means. I'm saying that this narrative and this agenda is very dangerous. I'm not going to say any specific book or people, right? Because I don't have to. It's all about what the impact of these things have on people's lives. Is it creating more power in their bodies? Is it creating more healing experiences? Is it making people feel more happy, more safe, more powerful, more aligned to their soul's mission? Most of the time, there's a lot of fear in there right a lot of battling a lot of spiritual entertainment and unfortunately a lot of that has been a program that has been seeded specifically to hijack the star seeds on mission right those of us that already are connecting to et's multidimensionality i'll give a specific example that would be, you know, I openly talk about Corey Good, but his blue chickens. <laughs> this is a exact example of this, okay? So the blue bird avian nation are the Pleiadian star nations. These blue people, blue bird people, have been deeply sacred 
to so many Native Americans. You will see Native American cultures in their feathered costumes, dancing ceremony and great reverence to connection to bring in these stellar energies. There is a depth and a substance to these ancient energies that are part of our lineage on earth. It's very human, it's ancient. This is why so many people resonate with the blue avians that, you know, Corey talks about. People, and this is how, like, how could they hijack a bunch of star seeds? Only through saying things that we will actually resonate with, right? So the Star Wars stories, the Galactic Wars, the interdimensional beings, made up names, all of these things were like, oh, I, re I have faint recollection of that. I remember that. I remember the ancient, profound ancestor bird peoples of the Pleiades. Okay, now I want you to take the vibration of this organic, ancient, substantial energy of the feathers that the Native Americans wear in their ceremony to revere and connect to the Pleiadian star nations. That energy versus the blue chickens <laughs> that Corey has, okay? There's no depth, no substance. It's a distortion on an original real thing unfortunately a lot of people fell for this because they connect with the original blue avian the avian star nations <laughs> okay <laughs> Of course, as soon as I started talking about this, Matthew showed up. Hey, brother, so good to see you. <laughs> so this is just one example, literally. I literally just give one example because this society, this false light, new age, glass ceiling, containment agenda, <laughs> it is full of this stuff. Make sure when you resonate with something to track it to the end. Use your human body. And again, this is why our human body is so essential. We're so ready to just toss our humanness out the window. Like, oh, we want to be some alien. We, we want to be some other thing. And it's like, no, human bodies, our human innocence, our human joy, our human creativity. This is the depth, the substance. When we are dancing together with our feathered gowns. Right? And I... I there is such an immense energy behind that. I know, right? Of course, Matthew shows up as soon as I start talking about blue chickens. <laughs> he just got, he's got like blue chicken sensory lobes on his forehead or something. <laughs> okay, but this literally, okay. And the other thing is the reason why I don't talk about names, except in the case of Corey, is because I was tasked by my mission teams to track him for two years. I can speak with confidence that this person is a misinfo agent because I have gone to his events, I've worked with him personally, I have witnessed him screw people over on a physical level in human form. And at that point, I can make a human rational judgment on this person in reality. Okay, because the field is so convoluted you know some people are channeling false entities some people are just doing their best some people are whatever i really don't want to dehumanize anyone right i just want to give you guys the transmission of the energy discernment but i don't want to throw anyone on the bus that i haven't actually studied i think that people are way too fast to jump on the wagon of calling people this disinformation agents as well right? Even healers, like you have one bad healing, you have one bad dream, all of a sudden people are throwing tomatoes and just going on a witch hunt on those people. I think that that's also not great, okay? Because most people are just flawed human beings being human beings, okay? So 
I think that, you know, if we never elevate people to a platform above ourselves, we'll never feel the need to blame them or to witch hunt after them when we are hurt. Because, you know, if you take an ascension class given by Corey Good and then you end up implanted with a bunch of stuff, It's like, why did you take an ascension class from Corey Good? Like, what part of his resume spoke that he would be a good ascension teacher? (laughs) Like, what part of his resume spoke ascension teacher at all? (laughs) Right? And it's unfortunate because people don't have the context, don't have the understanding of what ascension truly is. And there's just these buzzwords. And people are becoming celebrities. And I talked about this in the last video, but essentially we still have these seals in our solar plexus that make us idol worship. And we, because we haven't done the healing, we come into the spiritual community and we just find new things to idol worship worship outside of ourselves. So the only thing we need to idolize is the spark of creation inside of ourself. That is our true soul essence going within for answers exactly um and yeah this is the training ground that we hold space for i mean people will post questions like i am very sensitive to that energy like when people post questions in the forum and i can tell they already know the answer and they're just trying to get me to confirm it i literally will not answer the question i will say You know, it sounds like you already know the answer. It sounds like you need to just trust yourself, right? Um, Because I feel like this school is a rehabilitation container, is the healing technology for each being to come back into essence and embodiment of ourself, right? So we have our grand opening party tomorrow. I am super excited. We're literally just getting started. Uh, on this journey (laughs) i'm still bringing through the root chakra this is the final chakra of our journey it's deep you guys it's so deep um you are the ones to do this work because you have the awareness and you have the knowing and the understanding and the awareness having the awareness to do this work and not doing it is equating to being an accomplice to the false matrix okay because having this awareness means that you have the ability to do something you have the power to truly be on mission in order for you to be on mission You have to spiral inwards to do this level of healing and to find your soul essence and to embody it. And it might seem like if you've been in the spiritual community for 10 years and you're just now coming into this realization, I am so sorry that the new age is just so full of bullshit that, you know, we spiral for 10 years and we're still looking for the answer that was right there all along. So... It's so funny. Doc Boo says, can you do a root chakra quickie for us? And it's hysterical. And then, of course, Elizabeth says, there's no such thing as a root chakra quickie, I think. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for that quote. This is my quote. The shortcut is the long cut. (laughs) And the reason for that is there is no shortcut through the root. There's just what the root chakra is your body. The root chakra is your relationship with your body and this physical reality. All of the times that your human self was given toxins, given false information, given judgments, scrutiny, trauma, all of that distorts our relationship with our body. And so looking back on our life, it's been a lot. Okay, it's been a lot from the pharmaceuticals to the medical industry to our parents' trauma to being born in the hospital to TV. Every single thing in this world has 
been a force of anti-Christ in that in the understanding that Christ is the path of divine incarnation, everything in this world has worked its so hard to block that incarnation to happen. And so the root chakra is our body, but it's so much more than that too. It's also our relationship with time. The new age people love to say, there's no such thing as time. That's when I know there ain't in your root chakra. <laughs> your root chakra knows there is time. It happens. That time is how matter materializes. You will not have matter without time. That's why it's called a time matrix. Right? There is no movement without time because matter can only move through time. If there was no time, there would be no movement. There would be no evolution. There would be no existence. So the mastery of time occurs through our root chakra. This is why so many of us are inundated by our massive visions. I mean, you guys have to understand, I get visions about our mission 50 years down the line, right? For my human self in the beginning, I was... <laughs> inundated this is why we feel like it's so hard to get on our mission because in order for us to understand what our very next step is we have to be in the root chakra we have to be anchored in our physical body so we can be comfortable and relaxed to do one step at a time and so Yeah, um, I feel like this, sometimes this is my teaching style, is talking about these different layers of energies. It is still an energy transmission. Listening to these Starseed Mission Supports will create healing in your body, right? We have been talking so much about the root chakra today. So if you really allow your body to feel the vibration of this, what I'm speaking, then it will incur healing for you as well. Okay? So. <clears throat> um, and keeping people out of the bodies, it seems innocence on the surface, right? Like, oh, it's just Britney Spears. It's just candy. It's just this bottle of water called liquid death. <laughs> It's just the false matrix being the false matrix. Well, it's so much deeper than that. It is soul trafficking. They're trapping souls in people's bodies, in these fallen realities, siphoning their conscious energy. This is what soul trafficking is. Unfortunately, this is happening on a planetary level. And there are very different, many different limbs of this. And there are new age chapters of this agenda of human soul imprisonment and essentially the only task you have is to liberate yourself when you liberate yourself you free the creative energy to flow through you to create that which will help you in this mission of the liberation of this planet which is the mission that we're on None of that can happen until we free all of the quantas, psychic energy, quarks, sparks of energy in our own light body. When we feel free to create that, whatever we desire, and that means the resources we need to do what we need to do. The books that we need to write, the healing modalities, the schools we want to build, the healing centers, the hospitals, we need to be able to build the new world. We need to be able to build a new civilization. We're here to build new cities that are completely in the correct architecture of the Christos, which is in reverence to life, basically. It's the true pro-life. I'm going to make a sticker about that. <laughs> Redef redefine pro-life because they've hijacked our words. <laughs> okay, pro-life, anti-life, Christed, Antichrist. Now, I'm not, let's just be clear. I'm not talking about the abortion argument. I'm just talking about are you in reverence of creation and life uh, or are you not? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So in order for us to create these new cities, we need to liberate all of our creation consciousness energy from our body so that we have it all to all of it freed up to do what we want to do, what our soul is here to do and not what the programs are making happen. We don't need to be thinking about stuff that doesn't matter, that are just stealing our time, stealing our quanta. When we retrieve all of that quanta back into ourselves, we'll realize that our 24 hours, it be, we can slow down time actually. 24 hours, people believe like, oh, 24 hours, what can you do in 24 hours? Well, a lot when your muscles have upgraded their template to be able to be highly efficient like a free energy machine that's my secret that's how i get so much done because i'm constantly working on elevating the baseline template of my biology which is the work of bioregenesis as we do this as all of us do this together we will be able to create those new cities in which heaven on earth can land in real life creating these templates we can't bypass this healing because it all happens through our body all happens through the body happens through humanizing ourselves and becoming human again and so on that note Please come join us for our grand opening party tomorrow. I'm so excited to share this space with all of you because it is truly, I'm just so honored to get to play this role of Oracle for this project because it is, as it's coming through, I'm like, wow, there really is just nothing quite like it. <laughs> and I know that people that are inside of the container, they really love it. So if you're on the fence, come join us. I love you so much. I hope that this uh, transmission was helpful for you today. And um, I will catch you next week on Starseed Mission Support. Bye for now.